You feel that itch in your soul and you don't know what to paint. Here we go. Grab whatever supplies you have nearest to you. I just happen to have a bunch of watercolor markers sitting to the right of me. And so I literally grabbed a bunch of greens, a fluorescent orange, and a fluorescent pink. Yep, I know you think I'm insane, but we're going to just dive into this and see what happens. I'm going to spray my page a little bit. Yep, friends, it's all about just grabbing what you have, being instinctual. I'm doing a little spatter, two brushes, paint, lots of water on one brush, and just bang that brush on the other and get some color on the page. Now let's dive in, something simple, leaves. I'm going right in with the watercolor markers, and yeah, the color from the marker is going to be super soft because <laughs> I'm drawing it right into wet paper, but it's okay. This is just the first layer. This is the beginning. With something like this, when you're sitting down and you are coming to the page without a plan, without a clue, without many expectations, you just want to create something, you have to use your instincts. You have to just drop all expectations, grab a brush, grab a pen, grab a couple markers, and just have at it. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. I'm continuing along. I'm feeling like I want to spread around some of the color that I got on the page through the spatter and also through my markers. And so I'm doing just that. I'm playing around with the pressure of my brush. Now I grabbed one of my favorite colors. It's a peacock blue. These are zig clean color. They're like watercolor markers. The tips of these markers feel like watercolor brushes. If you want a more in-depth, more realistic tutorial with these markers, you're going to want to check out this video. So fun. So good. These markers are magic. And I'm just using my quarter inch dagger from the Art for Joy's Sake brush collection. And I'm just starting to move this color around and see what happens. And my basic shape, my basic subject matter today is simple teardrop leaves. Y'all know that I love a good leaf that starts from a teardrop shape. And then you can edit and refine that shape into anything you'd like. I'm not thinking too much about composition here. Friends, when you are high on the on the drive to create, but you are low on the inspiration, you don't need to mess around too much with planning. If you know you want to be creative, you know you want to make art, but you don't know what to make, trying to plan it out is going to stifle the whole experience. So you're better off when you're feeling that combination to just dive in and do whatever comes to you and see what happens. Now, I pulled out a couple of felt tip markers and trying trying to draw into the wet page, but they're not really working, obviously, because the felt tip is picking up that water, but no worries. Just cap them, put them to the side, and all that pigment will start flowing back soon enough. Grabbing a pencil. I'm using my pencil traditionally, like holding it the, the right way, the correct way, as if you were taught in school. You can also hold the pencil like this, where you're almost using it parallel to the page, where you're using the long edge of the pencil, and it gives you a different sense of control with that pencil. And see how aggressive I'm being? I'm being so bold and in the moment that my actual watercolor block is like shifting all around. And that is a sign that I'm just in it to win it. I am here for the moment. I'm not worrying about perfect placement, perfect setup. I am here to just get some marks on the page and feel better about life. And just continuing on, keep making those shapes, keep making those marks. Friends, this video is in real time. I'm working quickly. I'm working so quick that I don't have time to overthink things. Back in with the pencil. If you're wondering what pencil I'm using, I often use an HB. It's the perfect in-between. Now, as things start drawing on the page, you're going to be able to get more boldness and color out of your watercolor markers. And we're getting just that. The, the spritz that I added in the very beginning with my spray bottle starting to dry. And now I can get in there and get some actual contrast. Now, early on when I said I grabbed all these green markers and a fluorescent orange and a fluorescent pink, you were probably like, what? So this is, again, the time to experiment. When you're just diving into an art making session where you have no plan, why not do something completely insane? Why not grab materials that you normally wouldn't work together with? 
I mean, unless you have a specific desire for a specific palette, a specific subject matter, why not be wild and crazy? Because it's sometimes, it's so many times, in fact, that when you allow yourself the wild and crazy, that's when the most big and bold and beautiful happy accidents happen. Yes, I'm channeling my Bob Ross right now. I chase after happy accidents. And the best way to chase after happy accidents is to just let yourself be crazy, silly, goofy, and experimental. When you're experimenting like this, here are a couple questions you can ask yourself. Now, ask yourself quickly and then move on, of course, because we don't want to overthink. But number one, what do I love to sketch, paint, draw the most? For me, it's leaves, berries, flowers. Done. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. Number two, what is the one tool or material that I always want to use more, but I never do? Okay, that's what I'm going to pick up and use today. Number three, what is something that I have never, ever done before? Now, for me, I sprayed the paper. I often spray the paper and then mess around, but that's probably something you haven't done before, haven't done in a while. So Those are the three questions you can ask yourself when you are just diving into a completely experimental painting session. Give it a try. See what happens. Now, I've got my favorite liner brush from the Art for Joy Sake collection because my page is really starting to dry now. And I'm going in hard with these linear details. And, you know, because the thing is, yes, I started abstract. Yes, I started wild and crazy. But now I want to tighten it up a little bit. I want that satisfaction of something recognizable. And so the liner brush is going to do that for me. So remember, you can create linear detail in your leaves and your berries with your liner brush. You can also sketch with your liner brush. And as you just saw, you can even work in some really cool background into some of the smaller areas with your liner brush. It's an incredible brush, even though it's a longer bristled brush, it has a lot of cool control. It's, it's just so cool. It blows my mind every day. In these experimental moments, make sure you have conversations with yourself, just like you would during a normal or more formal painting session. Ask yourself, what what am I liking so far the most? I'm really loving these fluorescent accents, but in my head, I'm reminding myself not to go overboard or then it becomes like a fluorescent painting versus just a really cool fluorescent accent. Remind yourself that there are moments that you love. Pick out the the moments in your painting right now. Right now, in this second, what do you love the most? And maybe repeat a couple of those moments. Try to recreate them in a couple of spots. Another conversation you can have with yourself is, what brush do I have sitting near me right now that I haven't used yet in this painting? Well, go ahead and use it. (laughs) Also, think about repetition. This type of composition, it's a flat kind of pattern, right? So for composition, we don't want to get too deep into it. We don't want to stress ourselves out. But with composition, think about some other elements you could add in. If at this point you only have berries and leaves, what's something else you could add that would liven things up visually? That's a question I need to ask myself right now. And the answer for me right now is adding some pink, some pink washes here and there, some pink accents here and there in the leaves. A great thing to do with these watercolor markers, remember you don't have to just use them only like a traditional marker where you draw with them essentially. I love to put down some lines, sketch with them, and then bring in one of my favorite brushes full of clean water and spread that pigment around. It creates such a fun experience to work back and forth with markers and traditional brush back and forth. So fun. So I'm thinking a brush I haven't used yet is my three quarter inch flat wash brush. So I'm going to be bringing that out soon because I feel like I need some boldness. So I chose like a, a mustardy golden yellow. It's got, I've got a little bit of green on my brush from before and I'm just creating these big, bold teardrop shaped leaves. And this is becoming like a visual anchor for my pattern right now. And I'm really down with it. I'm down with it. See, my brush had a little bit of pink. It's picking up some color from underneath. Really cool. It's giving this crazy organic composition, uh, a little bit more structure and weight to it. I'm going right over top with my watercolor markers and creating some wet on damp 
details and you can see how those lines are diffusing, but because those leaves aren't soaking wet or puddles, the lines are still there and they're still obvious. Going in with some orange now still, a little bit of water on top of that orange marker. And then let's go in for some filler flowers with my darkest green that I grabbed and making some really scratchy, textury dots, and then getting in there with my liner brush to create some stems. And those stems are all kind of, all pointing into one point. So they look like a little spray. And I'm gonna do that in a couple of spots for composition. Friends, I want you to make me a promise right now. Gosh, I feel like I can be so bossy, but I'd love for you to make me a promise right now at least once a month or oh gosh let's say once every six weeks promise yourself that you'll do a painting like this 10 minutes 10 minutes it's in painting session times like these that you allow yourself that you give yourself the permission to have that you can discover things you could never have dreamed <laughs> 